Welcome and hello. In today's video, I'm going to step through a example of cPanel and setting up cron jobs. So this is for a registered domain, which I have up and running in production. And um, cron jobs are really important and, and helpful to, to basically tell the server to run a script on specified time or times. So there's all sorts of applications for this, such as automatically sending emails, cleaning up uh, your file system or your database, uh, scraping websites, the, all sorts of op op options. So we're going to look at uh, one example here today. If you have cPanel with your web hosting, that'd be good. And um, this is my main cPanel page. It's basically a, a menu of different tools. And um, it's, a, it's a GUI for doing things like setting up email, uh, domains, databases, software, and so on. If you go down to the very bottom, there is an advanced section here, and here is cron jobs. Your cPanel may look a little bit different, but if you can't find it, you can also just type in cron into the search, and it's the top entry for me here. Okay, so click on cron jobs. Then uh, what that this looks like is there's a section to add a new cron job, and then below that, there are the current cron jobs. So for me, I have five cron jobs already in place. And we're going to uh, look at this last one and basically recreate it and see how it works. All right, so um, just to take a step back, the cron job here, first you schedule when it happens and then you enter the command to run. So um, the cPanel GUI here has a lot of different options and tools. So if you want something to run every single minute, just every single minute and it automatically populates these fields down below. And these fields, once you hit save, actually get copy it into these places here. All right, so um, if you wanted to make it like five minutes after every hour, or maybe at 5.05 every day, or maybe only on the fifth day of the week, which I believe is, oh, sorry, that's fifth day of the month. This would be fifth day of the week, Friday's fifth. Yeah, so anyway, I like to keep it simple and just run it like once a day and say maybe make it at, 9 15 a.m that's what that would look like All right but for now we're just going to run it every minute and then i'll get back and set it to something like once a day which is a little bit more acceptable okay so the command is shows up here there's a general example of what that um, one job command should be and the first argument is going to be the absolute file path to the interpreter what you're seeing here is the absolute path to the PHP interpreter. So if your script was a PHP script, then this is what you would use. It may be a little bit different for your server. So um, let's see, for mine, it was user local bin PHP. Their example was the same thing. Again, it may be a little bit different if you're running a PHP script on, an, on a Linux server, but that may be correct. What I did is I just went into ChatGPT and asked it like, hey, where can I expect to find my interpreter for HP um, or Python or Node? The other ones I have down here, I've got, yeah, I've got one for Python and then I've got another one for Python. And then this, this application, this cron job is actually for a Node. So your path is gonna be different, of course, because this is my domain, but you're gonna have, um, like this is for a virtual environment I set up. So anyway, um, the second argument is the actual absolute path to the script itself. So we're going to take a look at this and where the, what that is, is right here. So it's just a PHP script. And in this example, it's going to, it's going to clean up my database. It says reset, reset script.php, but what it does is it basically deletes a table and regenerates the table. All right. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, here's the reset script and um, here like the first line it's a php file i'm just including some information here to grab my database connection and then the first query is to delete the database the second table is to create the database again and then the third table is basically to populate the database with the same 23 records that i have here is the database so if i click employees this is an employees database. This is just dummy data. It doesn't it's example.com for all the emails. And you can see that this is all there is. It's nothing special. There's 23 records. But what I'm going to do is 
let, let me first delete that existing cron job so it doesn't keep running. Let's delete. Now let's go to the database, refresh it, and I'm going to delete the first few records. All right, so go ahead and hit delete. Yes, confirm. There's other ways to do it. You can delete just by writing a query and specifying which records you want deleted. You can just do truncate and remove the whole, all the contents of the table. That would work too. But now I have my table and I want to see those four records repopulated at the top. So let's go ahead and type in our command. Okay, so adding the cron job, it's added. This third argument is out, actually an output file. So it's optional, but I like to have it. Just do the great, greater than, greater than symbol, the Chevron, and then uh, an absolute file path to that output file. And uh, what it is, it's going to be a log. It'll collect all the standard output. So if your cron script happens to ex, you know, print or echo anything, then it'll be collected in that log file on the server. And this um, two greater than ampersand one is also something I've always added because it will collect and print out any of the standard error messages to that same output script. Okay, so that would all be taking place here on the server. Okay, so one minute has passed. The cron job has executed. Let's go ahead and check our database by clicking employees, refreshing the table, and boom, sure enough, those last four records are repopulated. All right. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention is if you have uh, SSH access, then you can um, also modify the cron tab directly. You can make the same edits that we were making over in cPanel, but directly in um, uh, the putty window. So that is in bar spool, I believe, cron. And then I'm on a shared server, so all I'm seeing is my uh, username here, but this is actually the file itself. So what I would do is open that file, and sure enough, here is the same thing we were seeing over over here, but it's in a file where we're seeing, okay, every five minutes, 9.15 a.m., first at 1.01 a.m., 1.01 a.m., and then, um, okay, this is not updated. This is, I'm sorry. Uh, this will update, and this is only where you where you can read, and it, it there's on it's on a delay. It's it'll get updated soon. What I meant to say is the Tron tab. Uh, once you're logged in as your user, you can just type Cron tab slash dash l for list, and it will display the Cron jobs right there. Yeah, so that's what I expected to see. And if you want to make the edits, it would just be Cron tab dash e for edit. So let's bring that up. Right. So what I could do here is instead of um, every minute of the day, I could change this to, oops, say 9.15, or let's make it 101 a.m. every day, and then save that, and then come back to the cron page. And then once I refresh, I should see those two ones appear down here. So I'm just going to do a control shift R to refresh and boom, sure enough, there's that. So that was the quick and dirty version of how I schedule cron jobs on uh, for PHP. I can do it for yeah Python and and uh, and Node.js as well through cPanel. And I hope uh, you helped found this helpful.